morning. We are so excited that you joined us here today. We are going to enter into a time of worship. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Connect Fellowship Church. We hope you've all had a very, very Merry Christmas, and we're very excited that you've decided to join us this morning. Before we move into today's message, I'd like to encourage you to download our app, the Connect Fellowship Church app. It's available on iOS and Android, and it has tons of useful resources to stay engaged here at Connect. If this is your very first time joining us, we would love to say welcome. Welcome to the Connect family. If this is your very first time, or if you have never filled out a New Here card before, we encourage you to go ahead and click the New Here tab on that app. Fill out the information. We'd love to get to know you, to get connected with you, and do life with you, because that's what we do here at Connect. There's also a tab on there that says your next move. Well, guys, if you've been coming to Connect one week, three weeks, six months, doesn't matter. If you have not been involved, get involved. It's, it's a life changer. Click that Your Next Move tab. Fill out that information if you'd like to join a serve team or if you are new to Connect or let's say you are new to Jesus and you have made the decision that you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
click that Your Next Move tab, fill that information out. We'd love to get connected with you. Also, if you need prayer on either any of those tabs, there's a prayer request tab in there or anywhere in there that you can fill information out and you need prayer for anything specifically, or if you just need prayer in general, fill it out, send it to us. We know without a shadow of a doubt that prayer works. We would love to pray with you. We would love to pray for you. Also, there is a giving tab on the app. Click that giving tab if you want to continue to be faithful in your giving, even when we're not meeting in person. We believe that giving is worship to God. You can continue to do that on the app. You can also do that on the website, connectfellowship.church. Now, if you are a, let's say, if you are a giver, if you are an active participant in Connect Fellowship Church, I want to let you know about a meeting we're having next Sunday, January 3rd. We're having what we're going to call a family meeting. We try to do this once a year. We're going to talk about 2020 budget, 2021 budget, the things that we did and we didn't do in 2020, and the vision for 2021. So if you are a part of Connect Fellowship Church, we encourage you to come Sunday, January 3rd at 530, and be a part of this family meeting. See what's going on here at Connect Fellowship Church. Guys, we love you. We're so excited to have you with us this morning. If you would, stay tuned. We're going to move right into the message with Pastor Brian. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're gonna look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right Now Media, it's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. Well, welcome everyone to week four of our series, Home for the Holidays. I am so glad you are with us today online, and we are just having so much fun this week. It's Christmas. It's hopefully you're hanging out with family today and just enjoying your time off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I know it's cold, and maybe you bought a fireplace, so we want to say welcome. Thank you for coming today. Well, we are going to get into the last part of Home for the Holidays. And Home for the Holidays Part 4, the title of today, if you're going to write this down, is called Joy to the World. And I want to really talk about this word joy. Because we say joy to the world because Jesus came, right? It's joy to the world. That joy should never stop. Now, we're not talking about happiness. Don't misunderstand the word happiness and joy. It's not the same thing. Joy is something totally different. It's something else. Joy is not a choice. It's not a response to some result. It's consistent. Joy is a characteristic that God has placed in all of us, and He wants us to live in it. You know, happiness, to be happy, is is a moment of time where, let's say you are competing in sports and you win the game, then you're happy. But if you did not lose, if you did not win the game, then you're not happy. See, there's a result there. 
But joy is not a result. It's, it's consistent in our lives that God has placed in us. When Jesus came joy to the world, he placed this word joy as a characteristic to live in because God is who he says he is. He wants to see us joyful. He never said he wants to see us happy. You think about this word joy, and I want to dig into this word today because I want you to start out the new year. Coming up next week is going to be 2021. And we're going to take 2020 and we're going to just put it in the history book. And we're going to live out a new life of 2021. And, and we're going to move into this 2021 with a, uh, a, a passion to be joyful. It's, it's something that you're going to seek God on. And I'm going to show you how to make sure that it applies into your life and that you live it out versus have to try so hard to be joyful. Think about this. Have you ever woken up? And thinking of a worship song, maybe you came to church that morning and uh, and Monday morning and you start you, you just keep singing that song. Or maybe you heard it on the radio and, and, and that song stuck in your head and you woke up and you just started worshiping God. And, and there's something that happens there or maybe uh, you never woke, woken up before and praising God, but you'd love to. I'm telling you, there's something about when you... When, when believers wake up in the morning and we start to worship the Father automatically, we start thinking of God, not checking our phone. We start to go, okay, God, today's a new day. A lot of times I wake up and I'm like, okay, God, what are you telling me today? What are you doing today? And then I grab my phone. There's many days I grab my phone first and I'm like, oh, nope, because I'm looking at emails and uh, things that, you know, like, the news, you know, it's just, start, it starts your day out pretty bad, and then your joy just goes in the tube. But when we become believers, our spirit becomes alive. There's something about our spirit is consistently in tune with God, and it's consistently worshiping Him, even if you don't want to, your spirit that lives in you is worshiping God. It's a beautiful image. No, the Spirit wants you to submit to Him that's living inside of you. And what they want, and what He wants you to receive is a joy. It's a joy. It's something about when you start to worship the Father, when you start to go out and you sing. That's why we open up our church services with worship. Because it, 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 it gets your heart in tune with your spirit, which goes and connects to God. It's the bedrock of joy. It, 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 it grips our soul to get us this passion in the deepest parts of our being to, to worship God and, and God's goodness and His majesty and the power and the love of God comes over us is when we start to live in this word, joy. Now I want you to close your eyes and imagine for a minute. Just, just close your eyes. Are you sitting at the sofa right now? Or you're driving in a car, don't close your eyes. Don't do that. But imagine you're closing your eyes. And I want you to think of the magnitude of worship in front of the throne of God. Now you think about it. The Bible talks about the angels are singing holy, holy, holy all day long. It's the presence of God. It's the, this 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 unbelievable spirit that's connected with our spirit that gives us this joy that we can live out in our life today. But joy is stolen a lot of times from us because we allow our flesh to want what it wants. And, and, and you have this competing spirit that goes on. It's kind of like a, a good wolf and a bad wolf. Like they're in, the, they're in the same jungle and a good wolf and you have a bad wolf and the chances are there, it's in all of us. We also have a bad wolf and a good wolf that lives inside of us. It's the flesh versus the spirit. And how do you defeat it? Is that you allow the the goodness of the spirit to overflow in you, not your flesh. But I want you to imagine the, the magnitude of worship in front of the throne of God. I want you to imagine yourself at the altar in front of God worshiping is so overwhelmingly glorious that it shakes the throne room 
to where we almost probably start to shake because we're in the presence of God. Joy is just not this feeling of being happy. Joy is a characteristic that God placed in us that He wants you to receive today. But I'm going to give you a visual picture of the God we worship. I want I want you to get get you to see what He sees, and He gave us a, a glimpse of Jesus in the heavenly realms in Revelation. So if you have your Bibles or maybe. Uh, you, you're on the app right now, and you're looking at Revelation chapter 1, verse 12 through 15. Listen to this. This is John wrote this. He was on the island, and he wrote this, and God gave him the vision and said, write this down and give it to the people. It is the last book of the Bible. It, it's the winning formula of what is to come, which should give you motivation to live this life out to the fullest with joy in it. Listen to this. When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands. And standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, which would be considered the Son of Man, was Jesus. And he was wearing this long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair was white like wool, as white as snow. It was pure. His eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnace. And his voice thundered like a mighty ocean wave. What a visual picture that... God has given us of the Son of Man in heaven. That he's bright white, his hair is 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 pure white. There's a, there's an authority there. Wisdom. Understand. His eyes are like fire. He, his feet are like bronze. And if you ever seen a uh, uh, new bronze where it's shiny, it's hard, it's 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 rock solid. You know, the angels had, had a front row seat to this holiness. It cannot help but, but, but worship God. It's one thing to cry out about the mighty and the strong and the powerful king he is. And it's quite another to worship him. You can say God is glorious. You can be in fear of God. You can say, whoa, God's in our presence. Let me, let me go down. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of afraid I want God, but I don't know how to receive Him. So I'm just going to stand right here, Father. There's the difference between seeing the powerful and the majesty like that. And there's another way where we arm open wide and worship Him. That means that this awe-inspiring God is not only the mighty and the glorious, but that He is good. And He's worthy that we worship Him to a full extent. And He wants you to receive that today. He wants you to receive Him in in a worship of joy, not a worship of fear. You fear God is not because you're scared of God. You fear God is because you are kind of like he's your father. Like when you mess up, you're scared of your dad, but you know he loves you. You're scared of your dad, but you know you love him. And you come to him like a child that just did something bad. And you, you know, you ever, you ever had a two-year-old? Think about a two-year-old. Like they, they, they will test the dad, right? I'm telling you. You say, hey, don't touch that. And they look at you, and their little finger goes, are you like, oh yeah, I told you to not touch it. They don't know that fear yet. And then you get a little rule and you smack their hand like that or whatever, you know, like whatever how you put them in timeout. I try to put a two-year-old in timeout, it's like impossible. Right? But they understand that the little rule, little smack on the hand, guess what? Don't do that. 
And then they understand that there's a consequence to their action. And that's something that we come to God with. A fear of God is knowing that if we aren't obedient and we, we, we aren't fully submitted, that there's a consequence to our actions. Not that, that God's going to kill you and strike you dead right there, but God's going to allow the consequences to affect you because it's just going to happen. He'll be there in it with you, but you're going to have to walk through it. So I want to give you just a few steps today. It's a couple steps. Three steps to joy. Because 2020 has stolen a lot of people's joy. Even mine personally sometimes. This, this year was a rough year. But we got through it. We're stronger for it. We worship God better. We, we see things that we didn't see last year. That we see this year what's to come. God has motivated my spirit to see things that he's going to do. It's, it's just, it's something about that. And I, I can't wait till next week we start our new series called Favor of God. It's going to really change your life. And we're going to, we're going to walk out next year of January 2021. And we're going to, we're going to teach and we're going to pray and see God for 21 days and fast. And we're going to ask God for the favor of God over this church and over your life. But you got to walk in the joy first. So the steps of joy. Here's number one. We, we, I discussed this a little bit in depth. It's to worship. Worship is the pathway to joy. It's, it's, a, it's the first step of it. I just gave you a description of when he said the Son of Man with the bronze feet and a, and a bright, bright white head and the glowing skin of, of him just coming out with a robe and, and he's glowing and you, you ba- he's glowing so much you kind of like you can't see who he is, but you know it's glorious, you know it's beautiful, and you just worship him. And when you get in the presence of God, it's, he, he gives you this joy. And let me tell you what happened to John. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. And when I saw him, this is John talking, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, don't be afraid. That's a word for somebody today. God's saying, hey, hey, I'm going to put my right hand on you. Don't be afraid. I am the first and I am the last. I am the living one. I died. But look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys to the death and the grave. That's a word. There's something about hearing that, that Jesus holds the keys to the death and the grave. This fear of dying, maybe you have that fear of dying. Maybe maybe people passed away in your life and you, you, you're in this grieving moment. But remember, Jesus has the key to the death and the grave. There's, there's a joy in that. Not that someone close to you passed away, but for my, me personally, I don't fear of dying. I don't have a fear of dying at all. What I do want to see is I want to see a life fulfilled for Jesus. That's, that's what I long for. And it motivates me to get up every day and to worship God. But it's easy to get sidetracked from worship. We get caught up into the chaos of life and we allow our moods to change based on how we feel at the moment. You know, we get annoyed or sad and we, we don't get the attention of loved ones or others and we... We start to sabotage our relationships because we're not happy. And we allow that bad side of us to come out. We allow that flesh to take over. But our eyes are meant to stay consistently gazing upon the king. And how often we forget that we are created to focus our attention and worship our God. And he deserves it. We receive joy from giving. When we when we give out the worship, we receive the joy. It, it's given back to us. It's the first thing we think when we wake up in the morning is our to do list and all the things we got to do. And I feel the dre- the drudgery of the the job I have and the day ahead of me. 
But there's something about when you stop in your tracks and you say, you know what, I am not going to allow this fear of the chaos that ain't that bad. My job is not as bad as it sounds. I know I hate it, but I'm going to show up and I'm going to give it everything I have because I'm going to worship you, God. And let me tell you something. He will give you a spirit of creativity. He'll give you a spirit of to-do. He'll give you a spirit of love and joy. And you will be the most impactful, impactful person on your job. It's like instant, instant moment that your life can change right now. But you got to want it. And maybe we need to get to our spirit back in the sink with our Heavenly Father. Maybe you're so out of sync that, that you, need, you need some paddles. Boom. And get your heart back pumping again. You're, you're so chaotic and you're so caught up in your to-do list and what to do and what not to do, what you have and what you don't have, that I'm not happy. Other people don't love me. I have this and that and this and that. And I'm telling you, when you live that life, you've got to move in one moment, in one place, and that's at the feet of Jesus. Jesus told us this story in Luke chapter 10, verse 39. Let me tell you the story. This is the story of Mary and Martha, two sisters. Jesus comes to their house. And we start here in verse 39. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. Did you feel like that at Christmas? One person cooking all the food while everybody else was hanging out, enjoying each other, and you were the only miserable one? <laughs> Listen to this right now. Just pay attention. For all you to-do list people, you do is that every, it, it, you got to get it done. It makes you happy. No, 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 no. Listen to this. He said, but Martha was distracted by the dinner she was preparing. And she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her, Jesus, to come and help me. Man, isn't that something how Martha had this attitude that she's going to tell the God of all creation in heaven and earth to you tell her, Jesus, to come help me. She had this attitude about it. She couldn't receive the joy, and she couldn't see the person that she was talking to in front of her could solve all her problems, that she was commanding him and telling him what to do. There's something about that when we start to worship God that way. God, you need to help me. I'm tired of this life. I'm tired of all this, God. God, uh, uh, this is not fair. And you start to command God to... You, you start to tell him what you think you should do and what he should do for you. And you have this pride about you because pride will seep in. It's, a, it's another form that will steal your joy. Pride will take your joy and move it over here. And you will start to think that you got to do everything. You start to command God what to do. Tell her to come here and help me, God. But listen to this. But the Lord said to her, man, all I know is when the Lord speaks, I want to listen to what he has to say. And he did it so kindly here. He didn't go, shut up, woman, and get behind me. He didn't say that. He knew where Martha was at. He knew that she was trying to serve everybody and that her life was about trying to get 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 everybody to love her. And, and she wanted the meal to be perfect. And, and he knew that. But he also had to use this as a teaching to go, hey, Martha, that's important. But it's not that important. You can really receive what you're looking for right here. Now listen to this. My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Only one. Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken away from her. Mary, Mary knew that being at the feet of Jesus was the only place that she can receive everything that she was longing for. And Jesus says, hey, Martha, I, look, don't get caught up into all the details. I do that all the time. Personally, I'm a doer. And when I see all the details that need to get done, my mind goes crazy. And I really start getting annoyed because all the things i got to do, and I'm doing them. And then when someone walks in around me, hey, why aren't you helping me? Why are you walking over there and doing that? 
right? And, and so you get caught up in your moment, but then you got to stop and say, God, you know what? I'm going to stop and spend some time with you. And I'm going to sit at your feet, and I'm going to pray and listen to you, and I'm going to, to, to worship you. And let me say this. Your to-do detail list of all the things you got to do, all the bills you got to pay, all that, none of that changes. But you know what changes? Your heart. The joy comes over you. And you get this zeal about you after you spend time with God that, hey, you know what? I'll just have fun doing it. And it seems like what you are going to spend all day on doing, miserable and moody, you get it done in one hour with some joy, and you got time to go do whatever for fun. I'm telling you, it's an instant relief when you commit yourself to worshiping God. So a question for you today, a personal question to ask yourself is this. What is the first thing you do when you wake up? Do you check your phone? Do you pray? Do you sing? Or do you grumble? And if you grumble and you're miserable, then you need to spend time at the feet of Jesus and worship. It's the step and pathway to joy that no other person can receive. Unless you come at the feet of Jesus. Here's number two. In worship, number two, write this down. Bring your pain to God. You gotta bring your pain to God. To receive joy, you gotta bring in in, in exchange. Because God has a, a gift for you. But he wants something else in return for it. That's why we talk about tithing here. There's an exchange. You say, I'm going to worship you, God, with my tithe. And God says, since you're so obedient and you and you walk in with so much faith with that, guess what? I'm going to overflow and I'm going to give you more than you can ever imagine. And it's going to be double portion. Well, same thing with your joy. When you bring your pain to God, there's something about that you're you're walking in a faith here. You're, you're taking your pain and you're believing that if you take this pain that some of you don't want to let go. Come on, I know you. I know you. You, you like. It. How does he know my business? I get it. You don't want to let that pain go. You like that pain. It keeps you safe, doesn't it? You like that pain so much, you will never let it go, and you're gonna hold on to it like white knuckles, like you just holding on really tight. But God's saying, "Hey, bring the pain to me." And then what I will give you in exchange for that is the joy. Listen to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. So you receive the message with joy from the Holy Spirit. And in the spirit of the severe suffering it brought you. So let me read this again so you can hear this. So you receive the message with joy from the Holy Spirit. In spite, good word, in spite, not spirit, of the severe suffering it brought you. So so when they brought the gospel to the world, they knew that this new gospel that was coming to those people at that time was going to cause severe suffering, that people didn't like them for. But they still had the joy in the midst of it. And in this way... You imitate both us and the Lord. So when you bring your suffering to God, you know that when you bring the suffering that you're going to receive the joy. The suffering and the severe suffering it brought on you to follow Jesus. Meaning this, you got to remove this, this, this craziness that's going on in your heart that wants to keep you in pain. It wants to keep you suffering. It wants to keep you here. And God's saying, just give it to me. And I'll, I'll exchange it for something that your flesh can't give you. I'm going to exchange it. So, so there's, there's going to be there's going to be some turmoil here. But it's amazing when you you bring your pain to God that this exchange happens, and you get this joy. And people are like, "Hey, how do you have joy in the midst of this suffering?" 
a couple years ago, it was I guess about 10 years ago, they had, I was going to church, and they had this, this family. They were, they were from uh, Nigeria, and they were, they were uh, working in America, I guess, for about uh, a year or two. Okay, and they had visas here. So they, they would come out of church. Amazing couple, really amazing couple. He worked for Exxon, and they had three kids, and they had a two-year-old, and I think a five-year-old and a ten-year-old. And so it was a beautiful family, and he had to go, and they were moving back to Nigeria, so he had to go back home, and then he was working with Exxon, and then he was going out of town. Well, the baby got the flu while he was out of town for months. And he got the flu so bad, they had to put him in ICU, and he actually passed away. He died. Heartbreak. Story. And I would never want to ever lose a child like that. Or a child, period. But at the time, I've seen this family on, 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 from the outside looking in and just praying and seeing their pain. And when he came in, here is what the... The amazing moment was in his his walk with God that ministered to a lot of people. When he went visit his child at the funeral home because the casket was open, he just got in town. They had to take care of things. He got out to at the at the at the casket and he kneeled down and he worshipped God. And he started thanking God and telling God how amazing he is, how he created his son and his son's home with him. And thank you, God. He just started praising God. In his suffering, he became joyful. And he walked away with a smile on his face that everybody else was crying. And the father of this child walked with a joy that only could come from the Spirit. It's because he submitted himself to worshiping the Father, even in the suffering, the joy came on him. And it was such a story that I never forgot. It was such a, a, a tragic story that I'm like, man, still to this day I'm talking about it. That this father gets to the casket of his baby boy, and he starts to give God all the praise and worship. And he gets up with a smile, because he had a big smile. And he said, praise you, God. And he had a smile and he was singing. And it's something that just ministered to me, going, man, what a spirit. Life or death, God has the key to it all. He has the key to the grave and the death. And I'm telling you, learn from that. It's something about bringing your pain to God. It's something about worshiping God. Here's number three, and we're going to finish with this today. Number three, you worship, you bring your pain to God. Number three is reflect. Reflect. Listen to Joshua chapter 4, verse 20 through 22. It said, it was there in Gilgal that Joshua piled up 12 stones taken from the Jordan River. And Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them. This is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. There's something about remembering what God has done for you in the past. A lot of you maybe are suffering right now. And your, your 2020 has put such a burden on you that you can't even have a future or look out and even have any joy. But I want you to stop and think about the 12 stones that you placed and you praise God for and what he's done in your life and the small things that he has done for you. And I want you to remember those. And when your kids see you joyful and there's suffering involved and they see you worshiping, you can sit back and say, hey, let me tell you what God has done in this moment of my life that, that actually gives me the joy I have today. There's something about that. That reflection, that you reflect back and go, God, you know what? I'm looking at my situation here, and I remember, God, when you provided, when I had nothing. And if you did it then, I know you would do it again. There's so many moments that I live out in my life that I, I keep remembering when God saved my life when I fell 22. 
I remember that God provided for me in ways that I could ever imagine. I remember all the moments that He saved my life. I remember times at the time that God had blessed me in a way that I never could tell or even think about a, a human human could ever do. How He healed a kidney uh, uh, and, a, and a spleen that was ripped by my, my ribs when I fell, and he healed it overnight. Only God can do that. And I remember, and I look back when I look at my life sometimes, and I see the pain, and I see the vision that I have to do, and I really get down in the dump sometimes because I'm like, how can I do this, God? I don't have this. I don't have that. You want me to do this? I don't know, God, if I can do this. And I re- always reflect back. You remember, Brian, when I saved your life? You remember, Brian? That I was there with you? Do you remember when that check came in the mail and it shipped them? Do you remember when that all those people came to your house with a freezer full of meat? Seriously, this happened when I fell. I was out of work for six months. And they had a group of people, didn't even come to our church, heard about us, bought a freezer, deep freezer, bought the freezer, filled it up with all kind of meat, chicken, steak, all kind of stuff in there. And delivered it to our house and plugged it in. You remember that, Brian? I, yeah, yeah, I reflect back on and I think about what God has done in my life. And it gives me this joy that I can go, you know what, God? I'm going to stay at your feet. I'm going to worship you. And I'm going to reflect. Here's a question I want you to answer to yourself today. When was the last time you reflected on God's faithfulness to you? When's the last time you reflected on God's faithfulness to you? Let's pray. As we are ending this service today, it's the last service of 2020. A lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of unknown, a lot of heartache craziness. But let's reflect on what God has done. Let's reflect on what He's got you through. Let us reflect back on what He's done in your life today. Let's worship God. Let's bring our pain and let's reflect. Let's pray. Father, I pray a blessing in Your Spirit over every person here. Lord, that, that we will look in the future, but we will also look back. And Lord, thank you for providing. Thank you for healing us when we were sick. Thank you for protecting us from that car accident. Thank you, God, for protecting us from people. Lord, we just give you praise today. We give you praise that that someone is battling an addiction that they're going to uh, win today. Lord, we think we give you praise for the check that's coming in the mail to pay their electric bill. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in someone's future, and their promotion's going to happen today. Father, we give you praise. Even in our suffering, you get the praise. And Father, we thank you for the joy that's on us today. We thank you that our joy is our character. We thank you for this, and we give you praise for this. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, amen and amen. Love you guys. We'll see you in house next week. Love you. Thank you so much for joining us online. Connect Fellowship Church exists to see people change their family tree. We would love to hear about what God is doing in your life. You could tell us by going to connectfellowship.church forward slash connection card. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. For locations and service times, visit us at connectfellowship.church. Also, if you would like to be a part of what God is doing here at Connect Fellowship Church by giving, go to connectfellowship.church or you can download the app and give that way as well. We are so excited that you were able to join us today and our goal is that you have experienced a life change through this message. We hope that you have an amazing day.